Hi there, dermatologist Dr. Cynthia Bailey and skin wellness expert and today I'm going to help enable you to eat more greens. Why you want to eat more greens, it's not just your complexion, it's also to take 11 years of age off of your brain. So I want to help make that easy for you because many people think of ooh kale, greens, collards, yuck, can't possibly do it. I want to help you understand that it's actually pretty simple and pretty approachable. I've taken you into my winter garden, it's dormant right now, but in California we're never in entirely dormant. I have kale in my garden and I have collards in my garden so I'm going to cut some kale for you. This is my favorite sort of kale. It's Italian Tuscan kale. You know it just kind of grows like a weed for me in the garden. Yeah I plant it but it also just keeps growing. Cut just a bunch of leaves and pile them in my basket. You can also get them at the grocery store or you can get them at a farmer's market or if you have community sponsored agriculture boxes delivered, um, you can get your greens that way. And greens are available all year long. They are a winter crop in um, temperate climates and they grow in summer gardens as well. So greens are loaded with nutrients. For your complexion, they'll warm it up with beta carotene but they have vitamins, antioxidants, a ratio of all of that magic that is uniquely um, beneficial to your body. You can't replace it or bypass the benefits of greens by getting some of those um, nutrients in a pill form. You have to actually take the leaves Put them in your mouth and chew. So I'm going to cut a bunch of kale because what I do is I prep my kale and it keeps. So I prep my kale and keep it in the fridge. Gosh, it'll keep for a week or I mean honestly even more. And that way I'm not going through this process and prepping it all the time because that would be just something that would be too hard like on a weeknight for me to deal with. So. Here's a bunch of kale. Now we're going to go, this is the um, Italian kale. I'm going to take you over here. Here's um, another kind of kale. These are the wrinkly leaf purpley ones, which I eat them interchangeably. Um, I'm not going to do chard, which is also here. That's kind of a different flavor. I tend not to mix chard and kale, but I do mix all the kales in salad or in sautés. And then I'm going to go over here where my collards are to show you a really simple way to make collards. So here are collard greens. It's, it's a green that you rarely see in restaurants and even in recipes, but this is the highest bioavailable source, meaning your body can use it, of calcium in the plant world. So these are like little rock stars for those of us that have to worry about our bone integrity. They are resistant to bugs, you know, I have to feed them manure, but not that much. A little will go a long way. And they're super easy to prep in the kitchen as well because they're flat and very cooperative. They love to be trimmed. If you are fortunate enough like me to live in a temperate climate, I'd put collards in for the winter. And if not, I'd go see if you can get them in your market or at a community sponsored ag or the farmer's market. So I've got a nice little collection of greens. And then later this evening, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do with them. I've got you in my kitchen now. It's um, the evening that I of the day that I picked the kale. For dinner tonight, I'm also going to roast winter squash before I get into the kale because winter squash is a pretty common starch for me to have for dinner. It's easy and then I take it for lunch the next day. So this I prepped earlier in the week. It's one of these guys that I just brought in from my kitchen stoop. I grow them in my summer garden and harvest them in the fall, and then we eat them all winter. Chop it up, take the skin off, and um, chop it into bits like this. And then for roasting, I pour them in a pan. They shrink a lot. Hmm. I'm gonna use them all. It's a little bit crazy, but they shrink a lot, and they're gonna roast for a long time. Then I um, pour olive oil on them. This is olive oil. It's not from our garden, it's actually from friends of ours gardens um, in the wine country 
people give each other things like this when they visit each other. And I put a lot of salt because I like salt. I sort of mix it up to get the olive oil on a little bit more, like this. Nothing perfect because it's going to get hot and the olive oil is going to sort of splatter about. I'll put a little more. And then that's that. And then I'm going to put this in an oven that's 375, 385, sort of up towards the top of the oven, and it cooks until it's done, which since I kind of overstuffed this pan, it's probably going to take 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Sometimes it takes less. It really depends on the water content. But, I mean, that's really easy, aside from the fact that you have to prep one of these guys and or a butternut squash. I had three of these in the fridge. This is the very last. And it's super easy to make as a starchy side dish full of beta carotene, full of fiber, really, really good for my family and I. And it's easy. I'm going to show you how <clears throat> I make a really simple salad with kale. Um, first, what I do is I do it all in one bowl so that I don't have a lot of um, things that I have to clean afterwards. So this is my trusty salad bowl. You can see years of salad dressing in the bottom. And I make the salad dressing in there. And the way I make it is I use olive oil. I just put some olive oil in. We like our salad a little olive oily. So I'd say I've got maybe, we're having company tonight, so I don't know, that's maybe a, not a quarter of a cup. Um, I don't know, it's just some olive oil. And then I use, right now I'm in the mood for balsamic, so my dressings are made out of balsamic right now. So I put a splash of balsamic. We don't like our salad dressing too vinegary, so I'd say I've got maybe a tablespoon of balsamic in there. With a kale salad, I like it sweet. So here's some raw organic agave. And again, I just put sort of a squirt. Kind of depends on my mood. I think a little, it's a little more than normal because I kind of feel like I want it a little sweet tonight. And then I put salt. And then I mince a little bit of onion because I like the onion flavor in there. So it doesn't have to be like super minced, just sort of minced, sort of smallish, about that much. I put it in there and then I let it sit. So I whisk it up to mix it, blend it. And I let it sit because the, um, the salad dressing is going to pick up the onion flavor. So then here's the kale that I'm going to use. And the trick with the kale is the stems taste terrible. It's why people don't like kale. And so you want to get the stems out. And my favorite way to get the stems out is I just take the stem like that and I rip. And so I bunch them all up kind of in a roll like that and I take my ceramic knife and I kind of slice them into about one quarter inch. I put this in here and I massage it like this and you're going to see this lovely color come out and that's just full of you know this wonderful green is full of um, beta carotene covered by chlorophyll and it's absolutely delicious and so by by kind of breaking it down when you're massaging it you're um, helping to make it a little bit um, easier on the palate and then what I do is I take something like some kind of dried fruit or pear and I um, these are, these are figs, like that, feta cheese. I don't eat much dairy, and when I do, I eat goat. So I would take feta, and I would break it in, which I'm going to do later, because I'm going to massage more kale in there. Um, and I don't want to massage these things. It would make them sort of, uh, they'd lose their texture. And then I sprinkle some sunflower seeds in there, and that makes a salad. The next thing I want to show you is what to do with collard greens because that's another sort of 
vexing green that's really good for us. So I picked the collard greens today. They're these very um, bizarre, large, paddle-shaped greens. And you can't just pull the leaves out of these. They don't cooperate. So what I do with these is I have to actually cut the stem off the leaf like this, which is another sort of tedious task, but, you know, kind of meditative. I pile them up in a pile, which I'm going to then roll like a cigar, and um, slice them also a quarter of an inch. So to prep them, again, I roll them like this. You know, the tighter, the more um, well-behaved they are, the less they kind of get out of range. These ones are easier to cut because they are denser. So you see, I've got, you know, quarter inch, and that's easy to eat. I've got a lot of surface area here for the olive oil and just a wee bit of garlic from my summer garden. There's four of us tonight. It's a good thing we're all going to be subjected to this garlic. So I will do all these collards with this garlic and olive oil and salt. And I'm going to show you how I do that because again, it's super simple. But we're going to actually have two helpings of greens tonight and winter squash. So now I'm going to turn collards into something edible. So what I'm going to do is I've got this heating up. I put the olive oil in and I just put some and that much, just sort of some. And I give it a few minutes until it gets um, hot and a little bit thin, but I don't want to bring it to the smoking point because olive oil doesn't really like, this was already a hot pan, olive oil doesn't really like to be cooked at high heat. That looks pretty good. And then I put the garlic in, and I'm just putting the garlic in to get it sweating. So, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. I don't wanna brown it because then it tastes, it has an off bitter taste. So that was like, I don't know, 60 seconds or something, just enough to get it kind of jumping a little bit and. I can smell that it's releasing the uh, garlic flavor, and so then I put in, I, I put a little bit of water on the collards. Just, I sprinkled just a little bit because they were kind of dry. They've been sitting a bit. So a little bit of water, because they're gonna need that. I'm gonna coat them, turn them a bit to coat them with the olive oil. Turning down the heat. I'm gonna, a little salt on there because that'll pull the water out also get a little oily on all the tiny quarter inch strips which again increase to the surface to volume ratio so I'm loading the collards with flavor of olive oil and garlic you can see now I don't have quite the mountain that I had before it's starting to become a little more cooperative now I'm going to put I've got a little bit of water in here I'm just going to sort of Sprinkle a little bit around, like that. I'm gonna tap it, and because I don't wanna burn it, I'm gonna attempt to stick a simmer plate under there, just so that the heat isn't so intense on it, and I'm gonna ignore it for five minutes or something. Right now you can see that it's nice and bright green and what I don't want is the sort of dull olive green because then it doesn't taste as good. So here's the kale salad. I cut the rest of the kale. You can see the figs, you can see the feta and the sunflower seeds. The hardest thing about that was just ripping out the stems from the kale. It was very easy. Two servings of greens and we get extra bonus points for having butternut squash. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I hope I made greens approachable.